Hey guys, so today's video is about Mr. Beast and it is not really about anything necessarily that he's done recently. I think I'm just very fascinated in his growth on the platform and the fact that he has been almost, well, he's given me vibes of like other YouTubers in the past who are just completely uncancelable. Like it doesn't really matter what he does at this point. I feel like he's completely fine. And I really want to talk about it because there's been a few things that I feel like other people would get a lot more crap for. And this video is not me canceling him at all. I, I, that's not my job here. That's not my role. I'm just here to commentate. I'm just here to talk. Um, and you guys do that or what you will but yeah before we do all of that social media will be in the description along with anything else you want to find and let's just get into it so i'm not going to go into his beginnings of the internet because it's very simple he started just like anyone else like he just wanted to be a youtuber he saw that there was money in it he was very excited about it he was doing different types of videos before he kind of fell into the niche of doing really weird content like counting to a million and he would do these like 10 hour long live streams where he's just counting to random numbers or doing random games like that um and it's like gaining traction and then he did kind of videos about just handing out money to anyone he could find, Uber drivers, Uber Eats, delivery men, like just anyone that he could find, people on the street, random people. He went 10K to this person, 20K to that person. That's kind of how he grew. I think it was content that caught people's attention. So it was very easy to grow from it, but it's obviously difficult to do because not everyone has 10 hours to count to a million and not everyone has 10K to give away to someone. So I think it's a very niche genre to get into um it's very difficult to get into it i think um and that's basically why he grew he was one of the only people that, would, that was doing that and it wasn't like prank content it was like actual content of him doing that because i feel like this can kind of bleed into the prank genre but that wasn't him so it wasn't cringy and it was real so people obviously were more invested in it than like prank videos that's essentially how he grew and then it just went from there he's almost at 100 million subs now and since then kind of in between his beginning and now there have been a few controversies that people have spoken about and they looked like they could be a hiccup for mr beast but they never really were they were more of a speed bump but like a very gentle speed bump like just a little but nothing crazy so the first one was i think this was like the beginnings of what people wondering if um mr beast was gonna have a downfall and it was when his editor exposed him so he had fly does youtube um who had his own youtube channel but was an editor for other people he made a video called my experience editing for mr beast worst week of my life this was around the time when mr beast was looking for an editor and would fly people out to edit a video basically spend time with him in a video stick around and then he would get the video back see how he feels about it and then he would basically decide on that basis who he would employ it was like a test trial for editors um and flyder's youtube said that mr beast wasn't involved in most video making like he wasn't as involved as he makes it out to be which to me is a very weird statement to make because i feel like he's as involved as he can be because he's in like 100% of the video. So if he's not in there for some like random like B-roll footage that they film or like random scenes that aren't really that important, that's not really a big deal to me personally. But if you watch Mr. Beast's videos, he is in most of the footage. So if he's just not there for like the irrelevant stuff and he's doing something else at the time, I don't think that's like an expose worthy thing to say, but he edited it in there nonetheless. Um, he said that he lies about his videos, like the outcomes of the videos or like what happens during, how long things are done for, you know, the magic of Mr. Beast videos. So for example, if there's a don't take your hand away from the cube and the last person will win a million, apparently like they don't stand there for as long as they claim and it's just for entertainment purposes. But that hasn't really been proven. And that he wants to be a business partners and not friends. And that was when I kind of checked out from the video because of course, if you get employed at a supermarket, the CEO does not want to be friends with you. He actually wants a service from you that he, he wants to pay you for. So of course, I think people look at YouTubers as like not employers. They look at them as friends. So like a lot of the times you get these exposed videos about like, this was awful. He actually expected me to do work on time. And then if I didn't, he would have a go at me. And it's like, yeah, cause you're not there to have fun. You're actually there to do a job. And if you were working a regular office job, you wouldn't be like, oh no, like my CEO didn't want to talk to me. Like he actually wanted me to do work on time. Like I feel like people look at YouTubers as almost like not a real job and therefore they can't be real employers and they can't demand real things from their employees. I understand that YouTube is like a fun job, but the behind the scenes isn't very fun and it's not very glamorous. So if you're an editor for someone, it's not gonna be a very glamorous job. You're just gonna be editing and that's it. And you need to meet deadlines that have been given to you. Um, so he essentially said that like, he doesn't wanna be friends with me. And like, it was just, I don't know, to me that like, that's when I was a bit lost during the video. If I wasn't already lost, at the beginning of the video. I think, this is what I wrote down. I think Fly does YouTube essentially expects to be one of Jimmy's friends. Like, you know, the people that are in his videos, like his core friendship group that all win like islands and million dollars and cars. I think expected to be that and not the behind the scenes, non-glamorous 
job like i think he expected like he was gonna like uh, go there and they're gonna really like his personality and then invite him into videos and he was gonna blow up and be a famous youtuber instead he went there and he was editing videos because <laughs> that's what they employed him for like i don't think this was gonna be his big break on youtube as he expected and i think this is more obvious from the fact that he is a youtuber so clearly he went there with the intention of maybe possibly blowing up from the videos and that puts his motivations for filming this exposed video at like a question mark for me like what are the motivations to film in this exposed video is it to tell us the truth about this awful work environment or is it to tell us that you didn't become friends with jimmy and then didn't gain 100 million subs from it and win an island let's think about that for a minute so mr beast um actually goes on drama alert at, around this time um and this was like the first time he ever addressed drama because it was really the first time that he was in drama publicly and he explains how fly does youtube's motivations were malicious from the start um as he only mentioned negatives of the job but didn't mention any positives such as the really good pay which this apology this explanation it wasn't an apology he didn't say sorry but this explanation was very well accepted by everyone and i think for good reasons i think everyone went back to watch the original exposed video and thought what are the intentions? What are the intentions of this video? Like the expectations were you were going to go, edit, do a job, get paid and leave. What you expected was that you were going to go there, do your job, but actually get scouted by Jimmy and then get put into videos and become famous. Like I think most people assume that those were your intentions under cover of like being an editor. So people actually found more red flags in the video, such as he insinuated that he was a threat to Jimmy because he had 100,000 subs. Um, I'm not even joking. He, in the video, said that Jimmy treated him as if he was a threat and that's why he was treated so poorly because he had 100,000 subs. At that point, Jimmy had already had millions of subs. I don't think you're a threat. <laughs> like, I don't think you're a threat to Jimmy. I'm going to be so completely honest. I'm not a threat. You're not a threat. None of us are a threat. He's one of the most famous people on the internet. And also people noticed that it seems like he wanted more credit than was given. Like I said, linking back to the fact that he wanted to become famous from this because he said that he was never given credit in the description. Now, if that wasn't part of your contract, then why are you trying to expose? Because if it was part of your contract, sure. You can say that like, oh, I wasn't given credit, even though he said that on top of my pay, I'll also be put in the description. But he never showed a contract that said that. So I'm assuming the, the agreement was edit and you get paid and not edit and you get paid plus credit and description and if you're expecting extra bonuses on top of your job without actually asking for said bonuses or negotiating said bonuses it's not really exposed worthy in my opinion now the second thing was a little bit more serious but i felt like no one really talked about it so taylor lorenz um is a journalist she's worked for different um publications recently she has been under some big scrutiny by many many people for essentially being a hypocrite um i'm not gonna get into that because it's a separate video topic but essentially she talked about how online harassment trolling and doxing has like ruined her life and then at the same time doxed like a right-wing twitter account so people are just basically being like you can't say this and then do this but i'm not actually super versed on that situation so i can't really talk about it but taylor Lawrence has been getting a lot of shit on the internet lately so she actually used to work for the atlantic and this is when she wrote this article so the title essentially was that youtube's philanthropist has homophobic tweets from the past and it's all tweets and jokes for example using the f slur that windows is gay he was wearing a t-shirt that said i'm not gay but 20 dollars is 20 dollars and things like that now she called him like on the phone to get an apology but he apparently showed no regret or remorse he also said that i don't think anyone cares about this stuff and that was really the end of that story when this kind of reached mainstream media people were very upset at taylor lorenz for even writing this article they didn't really accept this as like cancel worthy and mr beast went on to do what he does like he just never really felt the effects of this um i remember there was also a video that people were calling out about him identifying as a helicopter which i thought was also transphobic um and he had actually explained that this was just a big joke um from like a meme back in the day and people completely accepted it and they moved on with their life on to number three we had saw turner who's another editor making more allegations ex um, against mr beast which actually then solidified fighters youtube's original allegations but even this wouldn't make a dent to mr beast so he put up tweets saying that he won't make a video about this but it was the most draining time of his life he was yelled at bullied called mentally arsler and replaceable was never credited he would never set them up for success like as mr beast would never set his editors up for success after his job but then in the comments he was encouraged to make a video so he essentially ended up making a video even though in the tweet he said that he wouldn't make a video on this um and it was called mr beast's editors full side of the story um that apparently mr beast's mom works as his momager um and that she was the one that created most of the toxic work environment so he would for example edit and he would have whole files of like almost edited videos deleted and told to start from scratch um but he never really had any proof for this like he didn't have proof of like a screenshot of a fully edited video and then it being gone and deleted and having to do it again so once again it's just like his word against jimmy's he made a video now 
when people are like, oh my God, this could solidify uh, Friday's YouTube um, video, people then found different evidence on um, Saw Turner's channel. And that was a video from a year ago that was called Why I Quit Working for Mr. Beast. And you'd think that this would solidify the future evidence, but it actually went completely against it. Now, let me get into it. So in that video, he said that Mr. Beast paid his full rent and that after he quit the job, he could stay there for free for as long as he wanted. Like Jimmy was like, hey, like, I know you don't work for me anymore, but don't feel any pressure to move out. You can stay for as long as you want. And it was a mutual decision to leave because he wanted to do backpacking around Asia and like pursue other careers and like other ventures. And Jimmy was completely fine with it and literally said like, hey, you can have this apartment. You can backpack through Asia. And you don't have to worry about like not having a house to come back to. He said that this was really the only reason that he could afford to backpack through Asia. So he was very grateful to Jimmy for doing this and that he was paid very good money to pursue the good life that he wanted. And that was basically the video. So then that really contradicts the video that he films a year later and it really contradicts the fighters youtube video right so not very good look he then released some messages between him and his friends complaining about working for mr beast at the time but it just looked like it didn't really add up with anything that he was saying so people then actually dug even deeper and they found keemstar's tweets about the original fighters youtube allegations in the video basically just like talking about it and at the time saw had actually responded to that tweet and completely defended mr beast and said it was like the best job he's ever had um and that mr b doesn't deserve to be exposed like this so people are now saying, has he made now that exposed video because maybe the backpacking through Asia and all of that didn't really go as he planned. Like he backpacked through Asia and then he came back maybe expecting to find more editing jobs or to restart his own YouTube channel and maybe things just didn't pan out and he had regretted leaving Mr. Beast's um, job because he left like a really secure, consistent job and secure income. Um, and maybe he just regretted it and now he thought it was a, an easy buck to film this exposed video, but he forgot to delete the old video about the good time that he had editing for Mr. Beast. Now, after this, Optimus had actually interviewed Saw um, in a video called Was Mr. Beast Really Mean to His Editor? where Saw said that he had actually initially defended Mr. Beast to not be blacklisted in the LA editor community. So apparently he was threatened that he was gonna like not find a job ever again and that's why he was defending Mr. Beast originally but he felt like he should expose him um, essentially. But that is now once again one word against the other. Um, and Saw actually kept on clickbaiting Mr. Beast for probably a whole year after that. Like there were a lot of videos with Mr. Beast in the title and thumbnail. So take with that we will. Moving on. Then we have the New York Times that posted an article about Mr. Beast called Mr. Beast, YouTube star wants to take over the business world. And basically compared him to Elon Musk of like the internet space. They mentioned his offensive tweets, um, editor stuff, and like a bunch of things basically collected into one and also regurgitating the original The Atlantic um, article that was put out. So an employee called Nate Anderson who moved to work for Jimmy quit after a week due to unreasonable demands. Nothing ever worked for him was the quote that they used from Nate. Mr. Beast actually declined an interview uh, and his PR team spoke for him. And guess who wrote this article? Taylor Lorenz. That's why it sounded so similar to the original The Atlantic article because it was written by the same person. Also, who was Nate Anderson? Flyers YouTube. So that was the original allegation. And it's kind of weird that Taylor Lorenz would look through like everything to do with Mr. Beast, but she wouldn't look through the contradicting evidence from Flyers YouTube and other people that have exposed Mr. Beast. Now I'm not on either side, I don't really care, but I just think if you're gonna write an article, it should be comprehensive on both sides and you should realistically show any contradicting evidence from both sides, which there were a lot of contradicting things from both Flyers YouTube and Saw Turner. So then we have Burger Bad is my next um, subtitle. So he um, put out a video called, I opened a restaurant that pays you to eat at it, where um, you basically buy a burger from him, buy, it was free and he would give you stuff for it, like AirPods, a car, money, etc. But then it actually turned into a full on business. I've actually stayed in Airbnbs before in London where you could order um, a Mr. Beast burger, but I just never did because I'm vegetarian and all I could order was chips, which I can't be asked to do. At first the food, like I said, was free and he would give away free stuff. So people lined up for literally hours, but now it's just like an actual food chain um, and he, just makes charity donations, uh, which is still good, obviously. Now, uh, there are a lot of videos trying it that have millions of views, like trying the whole menu. For example, Matt Stoney, um, he got 36 million views on a video trying the whole menu, but he is on like 16 million subs, so it makes sense. Now, reviews started coming in and they weren't really great. Um, there was a lot of like uncooked meat, um, sad looking burgers, etc. Like it looked, it's like a typical expectations versus reality situation. And the reason for these inconsistencies, some people had really good burgers and some people had really bad ones. And it's because he was using established restaurants and he was essentially just using their kitchen and their staff to make the burgers. So it could be like an Italian restaurant making burgers, or it could be a burger place making burgers, or it could be a Chinese place making burgers. So obviously depending on what restaurant it was, they had a different skill level for burgers. Um, that's why they were so inconsistent and they still are a bit inconsistent to this day from what I've heard. Now the Mr. Beast uh, burger Twitter 
account um, kept on replying to tweets to rectify the situation and asking people to DM them. So I'm assuming this has been rectified and I haven't really heard anything since. I think it's just like a regular food chain now. Like not amazing, but not awful either. You guys let me know if you've had it. Then we have the next thing, which is Squid Games. Obviously one of the biggest um, Netflix shows of all time. The original show is about a <sighs> to the death competition that was put on by rich people to see poor people fight for money that they really, really need um, and die for it and injure themselves for it. It's basically just a big conversation on capitalism is essentially what it was supposed to be. Now, Mr. Beast did a 456K Squid Games in real life and it has currently 266 million views. And there's a lot of money that he made from that. Now there are tweets calling him out for this saying that it's ironic to see um, a commentary on capitalism and then recreate it for money on YouTube, for fun. like. Do you see what I'm saying? Basically, that's what people were calling him out for. And therefore he made himself like the villain of the show, right? Because he was making himself the capitalistic rich people that were watching poor people fight to the death. Obviously no one's fighting to the death on YouTube. It was just not to the death. But then the situation just fixes itself for Mr. Beast because the creators of Squid Games actually announced that they would do their own Squid Games The Challenge, which would be a reality show and a copy of Mr. Beast's video. So they don't really understand their own show because they're doing what Mr. Beast was called out for. And he was told that he didn't understand the point of the show. So then if he didn't understand the point of the show, that means the creators of the show didn't understand the point of their show because they just copied his video for their show. I hope that made sense to someone because it made sense to me. Anyway, then we have the toilet cake, which is um, more recent. So Sugar Geek Show called out um, a creator, didn't name them, for asking her to make a toilet cake and then ghosting her. And she made three TikToks altogether. Now people speculated that it was Mr. Beast for his Willy Wonka video because that's when they saw toilet cakes. Now people are saying that like, just because someone else was picked to do the toilet cake, um, she should have still been paid for supplies and the time, even if it wasn't used because it takes so long to make um, a cake like that and it's so expensive like the supplies are so expensive that to then ghost her was very mean now another tiktok was posted about who was picked to do the cake and then she posted a tiktok explaining that mr beast called her after seeing her tiktoks and actually ended up paying her and apologizing that people are saying in the comments that he only really did this because she called him out and it gained some traction and if she hadn't done that she would have never been compensated for time and he would have just ghosted her which people are saying is just like this kind of links to like the editor stuff and like him just not paying people fairly and not treating his employees fairly but she wasn't really an employee. So people are just saying like, does this all link or does it not link? I guess people are saying this is just like another example of like a pretty bad work environment, but she doesn't work for him. So people are on both sides of things. I don't really know where I stand on this. Um, I'm so glad that she got compensated though. And then the last one that we have, I'm so out of breath, is anorexia. So this is more sensitive. So if you have any issues with eating disorders or anything like that, please leave. If you don't want to watch this video, I'll see you in my next one. But if you want to watch the rest of this and you think you can handle it, let's go. Um, so he actually posted a video called I didn't eat food for 30 days where he actually tries to not eat food for 30 days. He just drinks liquids like water and that's really it. Um, and he's under constant medical supervision, but it's still very unhealthy to not eat for 30 days, obviously. Um, so he has almost 100 million subs, which people think with that kind of influence, you wouldn't want to influence people to pursue eating disorders, mainly if you're making them look appealing. Um, and I'm going to talk about that. So he actually says he has Crohn's disease and that this will help him like not detox, but like help him with his Crohn's disease because he's been feeling pretty crap lately. And he also put a pinned comment on the video to give a warning about this disease uh, so that people that don't have the disease don't try to copy this video because he's saying he's only doing it because of this disease, whereas other people could do it to lose weight. Now he kept on reiterating in the video to not copy him, but obviously that is easier said than done. I mean, we have a younger audience and he said he was actually going to scrap the Willy Wonka video with the toilet cake because he was so tired from not eating food and that he in the end lost almost 18 pounds. And then during week two, he actually tried some food and spat it out, which is a very common kind of eating disorder method of like trying food but not gaining the calories, which is obviously also unhealthy. He actually didn't last a whole 30 days and his friends shaved his head because that was the punishment for not passing the test and the comment section was very positive but twitter not so much where people are almost glamorizing this video in a way that they were like you know i can never lose this kind of weight i'm going to starve myself for 30 days just like mr beast and basically just glamorizing eating disorders and talking about how this is encouraging them to starve themselves so obviously not very great but once again people are saying like you don't have to copy everything that you see on the internet but some people are saying that with the kind of influence that he has he shouldn't be doing things like this but then he has done some other pre like risky things like you know all the challenges that he does like not peeing and not moving away from things you know like anything could be copied and be risky but i feel like this was very different um with the reaction to it on twitter like, i think this was very different so you guys let me know what you think about mr beast i am conflicted i don't know a lot of this is obviously either mistakes or things that he's done in the past or things that are like he said she said so i don't know you guys let me know what you think um and subscribe to that bell like comment for engagement and i'll see you
my next one.